Good evening and welcome to the COVID-19 update on Channel's television and Millicent will walk out first the highlights. Edo State's COVID-19 enforcement team arrests suspects selling vaccination cards. Or your records impressive turnout as vaccination effort in Nigeria progresses. And U.S. to lift travel ban for fully vaccinated passengers from the U.K. and E.U. from November. In talking about travel restrictions, passengers who fail to show up for the COVID-19 test will face travel restrictions on their passports for at least six months and will not be able to travel abroad for this period. Non-Nigerian passport holders will have their visas revoked. The Secretary to the Government of the Federation and Chairman, Presidential Steering Committee on COVID-19 in a statement over the weekend, reinforcing the measures as the country battles the third wave. In the update, he also announced that the government had lifted the ban placed on flights coming into the country from India. However, the sanctions placed on airlines that convey passengers from restricted countries and travellers who are non-Nigerians remain. This is coming as after more than two weeks of increasing fatality figures from the pandemic and rising cases, Nigeria last night reported one death and less than 200 cases. Let's take a look at the update. 168 additional persons in Nigeria have tested positive to COVID-19 in the last 24 hours. According to the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, the latest figures were reported from 10 states and the FCT, indicating a drop from the figures reported earlier. Lagos, the epicenter of the disease, had the highest figures with 75 cases. 26 cases were recorded in Abia. Niger had 20, while 15 cases were recorded in the FCT. Benway and Ogun State recorded eight cases each, Oshu had seven, Edo had three, while Kaduna, Kano and Ondo states reported two cases each. There were zero cases reported from Bauchi, Ekiti, Imo, Oyo, Plateau, Rivers and Sokoto State and a backlog of discharges from Niger State. The overall count of confirmed cases in Nigeria now stands at 201,798. 275 people have been discharged in the last 24 hours, increasing the total number of recoveries to 190,563. One additional death from COVID-19 complications was reported in the last 24 hours, raising the fatality toll to 2,655. Presently, there are more than 8,000 active cases in Nigeria, while over 2.9 million samples have been tested so far. Over 4.4 million eligible Nigerians targeted for COVID-19 vaccination have been reached with the first dose, while 1.7 million persons have been fully vaccinated. In Africa, there are more than 8 million confirmed cases and over 206,000 deaths recorded across countries on the continent. The total global confirmed cases have now surpassed 228 million, while more than 4.6 million deaths have been reported. The Edo State Government's enforcement on COVID-19 vaccination may be yielding results following an increased number of persons vaccinated. However, there is a downside as a response team confirms the arrest of suspects trying to sell vaccination cards. The Permanent Secretary, Edo State Minister of Health, Dr. Samoyi Iroa, who confirmed this during the daily COVID-19 briefing, insists that those trying to get the COVID-19 vaccination cards illegally will also be culpable. He also explained that nursing mothers, pregnant women can take COVID-19 jabs under medical supervision, noting that exemptions will only be permitted where there is a proper cover note from a recognized health personnel. We have noted that with dismay, some persons are trying to buy cards. And we have also found that there are some people within the system, within the, the response team, we are trying to connive with some people who try to buy cars without taking the vaccines. In that light, we have also I mean, gotten those persons. We have handed them over to the security agencies and they are being handled officially the way they must be handled. In, in essence, it is not only the person selling the car that will, will go further to 
uh, arresting if necessary. We're also going to be arresting those who are trying to buy cars. For nursing mothers, they can take the vaccine. Nursing mothers can take. Uh, the vaccines do not have any negative effect. The studies have been done and it's been shown that nursing mothers can take. Actually, pregnant women can take. That's why I said the physicians will determine a few things. There are, there are, there are, in medicine, there are issues that are not cast in, one, in stone. Uh, so we, in that uh, light, we need, we need to discuss a little more. And we have given the uh, decision, I mean, the directives to the security agents who are, who are enforcing on those, some of those criteria. And to the southwest, where the second phase of the ongoing COVID-19 vaccination has been hit free with impressive turnout at designated centers across the state. This is according to the Executive Secretary or your State Primary Health Care Board, Mr. Mui Din or Latunji, who notes that there is remarkable improvement in acceptance and uptake of the vaccines, especially among artisans and traders. At the University of Ibadan, vaccination is underway as allotted uh, center uh, caters for the institution and the surrounding environment. The primary health centers across the 33 local government areas of your state are busy with the ongoing COVID-19 vaccines being administered. The state received both Moderna and AstraZeneca vaccines for the second phase of the inoculation exercise. And so far, acceptance for the vaccine has greatly improved as artisans and traders are seen being immunized in some centers. With the second phase of the COVID-19 vaccination, we try to mobilize the larger part of the community. You know, this one, it involves uh, every member of the community from the age of 18 and above. So they've all been well mobilized and the hoptic, as I did, it has been so commendable and the acceptance is very high compared with the uh, first phase. Now people were a little bit reluctant. This time around, people were even aggressive and we were actually demanding for it. At the University of Ibada, the success story on vaccination resonates. We vaccinated over 3,000 uh, persons. The figure approximately 3,180 eight persons. We went from faculty to faculties, departments to departments, units to units, vaccinating our members of staff. And then we went also to halls of residence to vaccinate some of our students. Health workers attribute the noticed improvement to more awareness. Empowerment by education was a major thrust of our management. And then the university set up an emergency response committee, which we worked together with to ensure that apart from the health care, the research aspect is not left unattended to as well, and also covered what students should do. As awareness increases with more residents turning up for the limited vaccines available, there is the need to increase the number of vaccines provided for the state in order to reduce the waiting time for those who present themselves for the second dose. Bukola Uriowo, China Television News. Well, let's go over now to Oshun State, where we understand that 95% of COVID-19 vaccine has been utilized there. Joining us now is the Special Advisor to the Governor on Public Health, Oshun State, Dr. Ola C.G. Olamiju. Thank you for joining us on the program. Good evening. Good evening and welcome. Um, right. What, what would you consider as the success, you know, in the uptake of COVID-19 vaccines in Oshun State? Uh, thank you very much. We are being good on the vaccination of our people with COVID-19 vaccines. Uh, we have a very good success rate of our uh, Considering the quantity we were given and the quantity administered, uh, we uh, had a very good rate of uh, success rate of uh, 95 percent. People are actually becoming more aware of the necessities to take the vaccine, and uh, 
We can tell you the vaccine has been good because it has reduced the uh, mortality rate. Though we lost some, uh, we recorded some fatalities. I think fatalities a uh, few weeks ago. Uh, but we noticed that those people that uh, succumbed to the scourge of uh, COVID-19 were the people that didn't take uh, the vaccine. And uh, the state government has actually made the sense of duty ever from the beginning of the pandemic to sensitizing the citizenry of the need to take the vaccine. People are responding well now, and uh, we take it also to institutions where we have collocation of people to taking the vaccine. And recently, the Mr. Governor Alaji Boyga has also mandated every civil servant and public, public uh, servant as well to you know, take the vaccine. And these have been made through the Office of the Head of Service to all MTAs, including street department and agencies of government. It has now become mandatory and compulsory for every uh, civil servant or public servant in the state of Oslo to be facilitated. Our provisions are being made to this effect. And uh, we have to thank the federal government for the receipt of uh, 47,344 additional doses of AstraZeneca vaccine that we received about uh, 72 hours ago. This is also helping us, although all together now, the doses we have received as a state is still less than 200,000 doses. And if each person is due for two, meaning that we are still, uh, it has only taken care of uh, about less than 100,000 uh, funnery books, those who are due for it. Uh, the first uh, doses we take took care of, uh, we took, take, took care of uh, eight uh, workers and so vulnerable uh, adults. And uh, also, we are following the same suit in terms of, you know, making people who are especially the vulnerable, the, the elderly, and those who have COVID, morbidity of hypertension, diabetes, kidneys, to taking this. Because it has been noted that those with comorbidity, you know, succumb more to the scourge of this uh, raging uh, pandemic of COVID-19. Amidu, um, if yeah. I may, because you, you talked about the vaccination mandate in the state. So, you know, we're saying, you're saying essentially Oshun State has joined um, a state like Edo State that is insisting on that. But the argument has also been that there aren't sufficient vaccines available. Um, and so, you know, insisting or uh, saying that um, people should take a vaccine, doesn't that perhaps even go against or perhaps make vaccine hesitancy even more prevalent uh, since you're insisting on that? Are you talking of the uh, adverse reaction after the administration of the vaccines? No, not that, but the fact that you're insisting uh, that people take the vaccine. Yes. Yes. The, you know, it was uh, an optional issue before. People were encouraged, especially all the cabinet members, the political officials, were encouraged to take it. Uh, even at the first, at the receipt of the first uh, doses of uh, AstraZeneca vaccine. But now, it is now that it is becoming, you know, compulsory for every public officer and civil servant to take in it. You know, at the, if not because uh, usually you should have a choice, because everybody is the chief stakeholder in his head. You can accept if it is as a matter of policy that Mr. Governor has made it now, just in the interest of uh, standing beside the side of uh, refugee virus and to make government responsible as well because we run inclusive government in the state of Oshu. Mr. Governor is interested in everybody particularly the governance of the state and to take the lead by the run and lead by example. That is why it has become so compulsory now. And it becomes so compulsory now because our data has never made it a 
kind of composer before. We work on data. We don't just make decisions there. All right. Because often we say that we are not our data. Where is it pointing to what decision? Well, we'd like to thank you, Special Advisor to the Governor of Public Health of Shun State, Dr. Lassi Jiu explaining um, the latest on vaccination, the vaccination mandates in the state. Outside Nigeria, a South African business group, Saka Liga, has lodged a court application to compel the South African government to disclose its grounds for the continued state of disaster, disaster management and lockdown levels. The group has called for an end to the state of disaster, which it claims has seen nearly 2 million people being unemployed and livelihoods lost. The country recently moved to adjusted alert level two lockdown restrictions, and the move has been met with a bittersweet reaction. There has been an outcry in South Africa over the continued national state of disaster. From political parties who are gearing up for the upcoming local government elections, to churches who like to have more congregates, to even business groups who have gone as far as filing a court order. We lodged an application with the High Court in Gauteng to obtain the records on which Minister Lamini Zuma based their decision um, over these past 18 months, actually the multiple decisions regarding lockdown, the levels of lockdown, the various restrictions. What is the basis on which the lockdown decisions are being made? And that is what we want uh, to see, and that is what we think is imperative for a good decision to be made, public scrutiny. To take the nation a step closer to normal, government recently moved the country to adjust it at level two. Uh, given the fact that we've got a drop in transmissions and drop in hospitalizations, um, and I think that uh, it's going to make campaigning in the election a lot easier to do uh, because uh, you're able to have bigger gatherings and the sort. The big thing South Africans need to know is what are the circumstances under which we can exit uh, the state of disaster and these uh, ends of lockdown. I think the president and his team need to say very clearly to citizens uh, you know, what our side of the, you know, of, the, of the contract is. My workforce, just on a Sunday, my workforce is uh, 127 workers, the ushers, my TV crew, uh, and, and the choir. So we're excited that we're allowed 250, but I think we've been clamoring and telling the president that at least they should allow us, for those of us that have a large congregation, you know, they should allow us 50%. Medical practitioners do believe it's early days to end the national state of disaster and have called for caution. I think we have to be a bit, uh, uh, will I say, a bit cautious, you know, uh, in our calls for a complete uh, removal of the lockdown restrictions. I mean, we, I think we got our fingers bent the first time we had a first wave last year, and uh, it seemed as if there was a you know significant decline in infections. We have to have a second wave towards um, uh, December holidays when things were quite restricted. So I think you know people have termed it quote unquote the new normal. The new normal is a delicate balance between how do we ensure that we break this uh, uh, community transmission in the country at the same time trying to balance. Uh, the the um, the need for citizens to be involved in economic activities to sustain uh, the country economically. Meanwhile, President Cyril Ramaphosa, responding to a written parliamentary Q and A, said all organs of state must develop sustainable regulatory measures for the control of COVID-19 before the state of emergency regulations can be lifted. From Johannesburg, South Africa, Brian Pugeni, Channels Television News. A booster shot will start being offered to all adults over 50 across the UK from today. Those eligible include younger adults with health conditions and frontline health and social care workers. Children aged 12 to 15 in England and Scotland are also now able to get a COVID vaccine. The rollout is also beginning in Wales this week, while in Northern Ireland it is likely to be offered from October. Dr. Ayodeji Olale is a special registrar in intensive care medicine at Royal Papworth Hospital, Cambridge, and he joins us now. Thank you for joining us on the program. First, what's your take, UK Prime Minister's winter plans to tackle COVID-19? Thank you, Millicent. Uh, good evening. Um, I think the plans uh, are top-notch, to be honest. Uh, they've just about covered everything, and uh, when you consider where we've come, in the management of this pandemic and where we are now. They've come up with a plan that I believe will take us through winter. The plan, of course, as you mentioned in your recap, 
involves the administration of booster vaccines to eligible people, and as well as the introduction of uh, vaccination for the younger people. That is, people now in the age bracket 12 to 15 can start to have vaccines. And our plan is not just about vaccines alone. New medications, that is therapeutics, have also been introduced into the NHS stockpile for treating severe, severe disease and for augmenting people who do not have any antibody response to COVID, as well as some international strategies as well. So I think the plan, the plan is well-rounded. It considers all the necessary information and it comes up with a strategy that we can rely on to see us through the winter. On, on jabs being introduced for 12 to 15 year olds, do you think that parents are quite open to this uh, and will it be made mandatory? Well, I mean, historically, uh, the younger people, children have always had to have uh, vaccines anyway. Uh, in the UK now, we just have about 5.5 million people that is above the age of 16 that have not been vaccinated. And that, that just accounts for about 11% of, of the of, of the population so I, I that 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 suggests that majority of the people anyway are open to 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 to, to vaccination so therefore i expect that these people will be open for their children to have it as well finally as you head into the winter months the possibility of perhaps other diseases i mean i mean or what you might call respiratory illnesses uh, will be there do you think that they could be more significant this year like influenza or others Mm. Yes, the, 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 that possibility does exist, given that in the winter of 2020 to 2021, there, there was essentially, there, there was very low incidence of influenza, as you've pointed out. And what this means is that it's possible that immunity overall has waned to it and there could be a rise as compared to, 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 to the previous winter, this winter. However, uh, I should remind everyone that the same strategies that we've employed to, um, to, to limit the spread of COVID are expected to be effective against influenza. That is, the, the social distancing, the wearing of face masks, and hand washing, all those strategies are, are effective across a wide range of respiratory viruses and respiratory pathogens anyway. So even though that possibility exists, I do not expect that would have a, a, you know, a crazy outbreak of flu this winter. All right, Dr. Ayode Jolale is a specialist registrar in intensive care medicine. Joining us from Cambridge, always a pleasure having you on the program. Thank you. Meanwhile, the White House says the ban on UK travellers coming to the US will be lifted in November. The ban has been enforced since March 2020 as the pandemic gathered pace. And in India, exports of COVID vaccines will resume from October five months after it stopped sending supplies overseas to focus on vaccinating its own population amid a surge in cases. The health minister said India would prioritize the global vaccine sharing platform COVAX and neighboring countries first. India, which says it will resume exports of COVID-19 vaccines from October, five months after it stopped sending supplies overseas to focus on vaccinating its own population amid a surge in cases. The health minister says India would prioritize the global vaccine sharing platform COVAX and neighboring countries first as supplies rise. More than 300 million vaccine doses would be produced in October and 1 billion in the last three months of the year. Over in the UK, as teenagers begin to receive the COVID jabs, former Prime Minister Gordon Brown says more than a billion vaccines will not get used, warning of the danger of vaccines being wasted by countries such as the US, the UK and other European countries as they hold on to their supplies. He says even allowing for booster jabs and vaccines now being administered to teenagers aged 12 to 15, there are still hundreds of millions of vaccines available that can save lives in the rest of the world. Researchers are collecting samples from bats in Cambodia in a bit to understand the coronavirus pandemic, returning to a region where a very familiar virus was found in animals decades ago. Two samples from horseshoe bats were collected in 2010 in Stong Trang province near Laos and kept in freezers at the Institut Pasteur du Cambodge in Phnom Penh. Tests done on them last year revealed a close relative to the coronavirus that has killed more than 4.5 million people worldwide. 
The Delta variant spreads and kills faster. Avoid close contact with anyone showing symptoms of respiratory illness. Continue to take responsibility. And you can visit our website. It's channelcv.com where you have breaking stories and other news at your fingertips. That's the program this evening. Thank you for watching. I'm Minnesota Walker. Stay healthy.